It wasn't too long ago when a young man would dream of running away to join the circus and one day stand in the center ring under the big top. Lions roar at the cracking whip. Trapeze artists fly with the greatest of ease while a parade of elephants march to the traditional theme of the event. However, a young boy and his four brothers didn't have to run too far from home. This is the story of William Bennett. William Henry Bennett, better known as Bill, was born in 1922 in the Shiloh section of York County, South Carolina, and he was the fifth of six brothers and two sisters. Everyone in town knew his father, Charles. C.P. Bennett, who served as a police officer in York, South Carolina during the Depression, earning $75 a month with eight children to feed. Bill's mother, Olive, was a descendant of James B. Strain, a scout in the Civil War who served under General Lee. Her grandfather survived the war, but lost his leg in a battle near Richmond, Virginia. The Bennetts also owned and operated a boarding house called the York Tourist House from 1938 until 1955, when two hailstorms on the same day devastated the premises. From the 1920s through the early 40s, South Carolina was home for the circus during the off-season. Throughout the winter months, time was spent training and designing new performances and death-defying acts. In the 30s, one company, the Barnett Brothers Circus, later known as the Wallace Brothers Circus, came into York one night looking for a place to stay. By chance, they asked Officer Bennett about a place to keep their elephants, monkeys, lions, and buffaloes out of the cold weather. Officer Bennett made a couple of telephone calls and managed to locate a large livery stable warm enough to keep the animals. And since then, the circus came back every year. At one time, the circus occupied the entire block by East Jefferson and Trinity Street, where today the York Lumber Company is located. And the Bennett brothers marveled at the atmosphere of entertainment under the big top, so inspired that they themselves trained and practiced for what would become an annual affair in York, the renowned and talented Bennett Brothers Circus. During the Great Depression, when Bill and four of his brothers, Joe, Charles, Stanley, and Douglas, set up tight wires and a trapeze behind the school and charged people to come in and see their show. Bill and his brothers were able to watch the performers practice their daring feats and techniques for free. And in turn, they copied the routines for their own show. Times may have been tough in those days, but for Bill, life was full of opportunities. Along with the exotic animals, came some famous cowboy movie stars who could wield a pistol, throw a rope, and draw a crowd. Fans would come from miles to see their movie screen heroes, such as Tom Tyler, Harry Carey, William Desmond, and Lee Powell, the very first actor to play the Lone Ranger. For seven years, the Bennett Brothers Circus performed for the folks of York. Bill eventually graduated from York High School in 1940, for a couple of years, he was employed as a bookkeeper at the Bank of York. Then, typical of Bill's nature, he didn't wait for the war to call him. He enlisted in the United States Army Air Corps, entering cadet school and piloting B-24 and B-29 bombers. Bill served as an aviation instructor through the war. In the early morning of September 2, 1945, General MacArthur, Fleet Admiral Nimitz, Admiral Halsey, and delegates of the Allied Powers accepted the formal surrender of Japan on the USS Missouri, and Bill Bennett was there. This is the photograph he took, circling the sky approximately 1,200 feet above the USS Missouri. In the Air Force, Bill earned the Good Conduct Medal, the Asiatic Pacific Medal, and the Victory Medal. After the war, Bill attended Erskine College where he majored in history. Barbara Ann Walker was also a student, who one day was leaving the post office only to see young Bill Bennett showing off by swinging around on the flagpole. As a professional performer, he timed his swing just right to meet Barbara face to face. That was when they first met. Barbara Ann Walker was from Louisville, Kentucky. Bill said, it's the home of fast horses and beautiful women, or beautiful horses and fast women. I hadn't figured it out yet. 
Bill constantly asked Barbara to go to the movies after their weekly choir practice, and when she finally accepted, he made her pay her way. The two have been together ever since. It was a hot 90 plus degrees with high humidity when Bill married Barbara Ann in Louisville, Kentucky on the 24th of August, 1948. The newlyweds returned to Erskine College to finish their education. After graduation, Bill wanted to fly for a commercial airline. However, after the war, pilots were plentiful and the pay extremely low. So in 1950, he went to work for the Selenase Corporation in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Barbara began her career as a school teacher in the York County School District. In 1951, the world changed for the Bennetts. Bill was badly injured in an automobile accident that left him with a debilitated leg. His endeavor to fly as a pilot had come to an end. However, his enthusiasm and positive outlook in life kept them going, and in 1956, Bill changed careers, becoming an insurance agent. It wasn't too long before the couple settled down, making York, South Carolina their home, blessed with a son and four daughters. Activities with school football games, color guard, and majorette tournaments, along with band competitions, kept the Bennett household on the go. They enjoyed traveling to the beach and, when it was considered at one time to be a special event, an occasional outing to McDonald's. The Bennett family life was centered in the York Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church. Bill served as a deacon and later as an elder in the church, and Barbara as a choir member and deacon as well. Barbara retired from the York County School District after 37 years, and Bill retired from insurance sales after 39 years, earning numerous sales awards. Now living in Rock Hill, South Carolina, Barbara and Bill celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary in August of 2008. Today, Bill enjoys reminiscing with other veterans about the Great War, as well as the good old days. His eyesight is failing, but his sense of humor and zest for life has not. Barbara still enjoys needlework, reading, and playing cards. In spite of the limitations Bill has as a result of his accident and the loss of their son to cancer, Bill and Barbara agree that the past 60 years have been more good than bad. They can look back on many good memories and look forward to more as they watch their children and grandchildren achieve their goals in life.